Okay. Um, ordinarily, we'd be down at Harbor Town, but situations uh, developed that uh, prevented us from going to Harbor Town, which obviously allowed us to come up here as well. I was kind of conflicted too. I didn't want to miss this, so you know things kind of broke the right way, no pun intended, uh, to get us up here to the uh, College uh, Football Hall of Fame, South Carolina uh, Football Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony, which means MJ Ward. Thankfully, is down at Harbor Town for us, watching everything going on at the RBC Heritage, presented by Boeing at the Harbor Town Golf Links on beautiful uh, Hilton Head Island. And before we bring on MJ, let me run down the top of the leaderboard. You got JT Poston, went out this morning, shot an 8-under 63. And Seamus Power, Colin Morikawa, they are next at 6-under 65. Austin Eckroats, Mackenzie Hughes, Sahith Thigala, Patrick Rogers, Sepp Straka, Ludwig Oberg. They are all at five under. So that's um that's nine golfers right there within about three shots of the lead. Uh, and then tied for tenth, Cameron Young, Russell Henley, Stefan Yeager, uh, Tom Hoagie. Patrick Canlay, Adam Hadwin, and Rory, Rory McElroy, they are there at four under, 67. Then you got Jason Day in a group at three under. And then check some others for you here real quick. Uh, Lucas Glover, two under, 69. Masters champion Scotty Scheffler picking it right back up, two under, 69. Justin Thomas bouncing back after a terrible Masters, two under, 69. Jordan Spieth, one under, 70. Ricky Fowler, one under, 70. And Kevin Kisner, uh, plus 273. Let's welcome him. MJ from Harbor Town, spending the day on the island. Welcome in, sir. How are you? Well, it's a pleasure to be with you guys. Pleasure is all ours. We wish we were there with you. I know you're having a big time. How was the weather for the golfers today? Well, I tell you, after you have the Masters, um, essentially what happens is is that in these kind of events, um, things you know it's like taking the taking an 800 pound gorilla off your back it's really kind of a rest and relax and since it's a designated event the players know the drill in terms of payments and what's going to happen it's it's kind of really uh like most of the time that you see with the week after a major um people are able to take a breath and kind of get themselves sorted out for the next run-up you know to the next major championship and, you know, being a designated event, I mean, the, the event has been at Harbor Town going back since, well, really the mid, mid-1960s uh, when Arnold was the first winner. And um, it's just a great, it's a great venue to be at. Um, clearly, it has an impact on tourism and the amount of money that's generated. And I think having a designated event ensures that they get a quality feel following what happened last week at Augusta. Yeah, on the the exhale, you're you're exactly right. But and I think that lasts for maybe a day, like today, you know, for the guys who were at the Masters, they've made the move and um who knows how many practice rounds they put in this week, but you know, get today's round. But you know, as well as anybody, MJ, the competitive juices with these guys will start kicking in tomorrow and, and then into the weekend, and, and they want to win a golf tournament and they want to win the big purse that's available. Well, I mean, I agree with you that at eventually at some point, um, you know, I mean, I mean, for Scotty Shepard to shoot two under par, it's like you signing your name to a check, Phil. I mean, it was mm. easy. I mean, he didn't, he didn't really have to push it hard. Um, you know, it's tough. After you win something that big, you go back to Dallas, and then, you know, then you have to come back east to really get, you know, back into the fray. Um, you know, it, it's a good opportunity. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to really have to show what they've got. There's a lot of question marks. You mentioned Justin Thomas. Same thing with Rory. I mean, there, there's a lot of these guys that, you know, when they came into Augusta, there was a feeling like, okay, let's see what we can do and see if we can make things happen here. But, um yeah, the competitive factor will come into play. Anytime you can win an event on the PGA Tour, whatever it is, tremendous advantage in terms of planning your schedule and your career. 
because a lot of these guys, now that the tour is only going from 125 players, I think it's to 70 players, it puts a lot of pressure on making sure that you can keep your exempt status. So every time you tee it up, you want to make sure that you're progressing you know, to that goal because there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to be around, and they're going to have to go other ways in which to get their tour status back. So looking at course stats from today, the hardest hole on the course was the par 3 14th, which, of course, is played over water. And there were only five birdies recorded there, 50 pars, 10 bogeys, four doubles or worse. What were they facing out there? Well, I mean, you know, one of the things that's really unique about the golf course in general, when Harbor Town was created by Pete Dye, and Nicholas had a role to play as a, I guess you could say as a consultant, there are tight corridors throughout the golf course. This is almost really the flip side of what you see with Augusta, where you have wider fairways, more elevation change, but at the same time, the precision factor is a big deal, and you know, a lot of people don't realize this. I mean, a lot of people who have come to Harbor Town, and one guy said this to me the other day. He said, he said, you know, you really don't see the lighthouse until the 18th hole. And that's basically true. I mean, you really don't until you get out to Calabogie Sound, and then you're out there when you finally get through the 16th and it takes you out. In regards to the 14th, the pond is really tight to that golf hole. And the slightest miscalculation and the part threes collectively – at Harbor Town are probably among the best on tour. So you really have to be geared towards being in the right spot at all times. Harbor Town is really a precision golf course. It's really not about power per se. Although the golf course is listed at 7,200, the real effective yardage is probably a little bit less than that for the most part. But it's really about precision in your play. And you watch the guys that have done well here in the past. That's a big part of their success. MJ Ward with us tonight from Harbortown after the uh, first round of the RBC Heritage Classic down on Hilton Head Island. And MJ, back to Scotty Scheffler for just a moment. First off, were you surprised that he's even playing in the event considering he's the Masters champion and might want to take a week or so off to recover and enjoy and sort of you know be flush in that victory? And secondly, with his wife still expecting their first baby, were, were you guys surprised that Scotty even attended this tournament, much less played as well as relatively he did today? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I that there's always going to be that question mark of, can you get golfed out? You know, can you mm-hmm. be playing too much golf? Um, but because this was a designated event, and I think that the tour wanted to make sure, I, I think Scotty's doing a goodwill gesture for himself and for the tournament, because you're right, what he could have done. I mean, he could have said, look, you know, I'm I'm gassed out. My wife is expecting. Um, you know, then I'm going to just have to, you know, take some time away before I really ramp it up for Valhalla, which is going to happen in less than a month's time. So you're absolutely right. I mean, I think, but diplomatically, I think he does himself a world of good for the tour and for the fan base of golf uh, that he's, that he is there. And certainly there's going to be a lot of attention paid to him. If he happens to score well tomorrow and gets into the fray, then, then what Phil said is very true. Then it becomes a really a good competitive atmosphere for the weekend. What do you think it says for the viability of golf in our state? First off, the, the Heritage has been around for a long, long time. Next month, we're going to have a, a PGA Tour event at Myrtle Beach for the first time. And then, of course, in 2031, the PGA Championship announced yesterday it's coming back to Kiowa. How much is South Carolina now a major player, in your mind, MJ, on the golf scene? Well, I, I mean, you hit the nail on the head here. I mean, there's a lot of events that are on tour that have been around a long time. Um, Greensboro is a great example of that I mean, because it goes way back. I mean, we're talking an event, I believe, goes back to the 30s if it doesn't go back even further. Um, but the Palmetto State is a big deal. I mean, you know, obviously the return of the PGA Championship at Kiowa. But Harbor Town, you know, when they were reshuffling the tech here about where were they going to play events, um, there's a game of musical chairs on tour. I mean, when the music stops, you don't know where you're going to be. And to give you an example, in my neck of the woods, the Westchester Classic had been on the scene as long as Harbortown had been. I mean, basically they started 
around the same time, and had it always been held at Westchester Country Club. And then the event went away, and then they created uh, the playoff structure, and Westchester was the odd man out, even though it hosted events many times. But I think there was a lot of good lobbying, and you know, clearly the tourism dollars that are out there, clearly this is a very big week you know, for the Hilton Head area in general and having the event there. So, you know, you've got to keep your eyes on the prize at all times. There's no guarantees on the PGA Tour schedule that you're going to get your spot. I mean, you're going to have to show that at all, all times. And clearly having Myrtle Beach, having Hilton Head, having the return of the PGA Championship. I mean, you know, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, although it's in Augusta, we're talking just about across the Savannah River. So, you know, for many people, the golf scene and the golf crowd in the Palmetto State and throughout much of the southeast is very much involved in golf, probably at a higher level than, than many areas of the country, simply by virtue of the fact that the warmer weather allows the season to be longer and people are following, you know, whoever their golf stars are. Okay, MJ, um, what's your plans for eating seafood while you're down there? Do you have a... <laughs> You have a go-to. Do you have a a particular a meal or two that you like to, you know, chomp well, on see, while you're down see, there? Phil, I'm I'm always of the belief that the, the press goes wherever somebody is comping somebody. So if they <laughs> if they boy. comp me, um, <laughs> I have a great appetite. I know there's a number of places. Um, frankly, I have some people, friends of mine, that live just off the island at Moss Creek, um, and I have some other friends that are not too far really off the island itself. Uh, but there really isn't any – I mean, I think it's all good. It's just good to be here. It's amazing what the atmosphere is like compared to a week ago. I mean, mm. it was really charged and intense, and this week is laid back. Yeah, it'll pick up as we get into the weekend, but it's just good to be back. It's a great site. I've been going to the event, going back to my days when I was a student at South Carolina. Um, always enjoyed seeing it, and I've played the course – many, many times. It's a great treat to see what it provides. And it really was the golf course that brought Pete Dye on the national scene so people could see the kind of work that he does. So there's a lot of great variables, and I'm just so happy to see that the event is still, you know, still doing what it's doing. Absolutely. Okay, sir, thank you. Uh, we will talk to you tomorrow night. Birdies, bogeys, biceps, George and MJ and others. Have a great night and a great day tomorrow. Thanks, hey, MJ. So let me ask you this. If I give them your name, will I get a table faster if I come here to eat? Will that, <laughs> you, will that you help? You will not any... even get in the door. Don't make that mistake. Okay, because I, I was going to say, you know, I know Phil, but then if I said that, I don't want some guy putting his hand on my collar and saying, we've got to toss this guy out of here. Okay? Yeah. Be careful who you, um, you know, mix with or, or let people know who you mix with. That could be Guys, a problem. It's a pleasure. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Thank you. All right, buddy. Take okay. care, man. MJ, MJ Ward from down at uh, Harbortown.